This Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet targets open-topped versions of BMW's 4 Series and Audi's A5 more effectively than the three-pointed star has ever managed before. Elegant styling makes it stand out in the showroom, plus you get sophisticated convertible touches from some of Mercedes' more exotic drop-top models, along with class-leading sophistication when it comes to suspension and automatic transmission. Will it all be enough to enable this Cabriolet C-Class to gain the upper hand in this tightly contested and style-conscious segment? Take an exotic Mercedes convertible, reduce it in size a little, give it a more sensible range of engines and price it at a level that doesn't necessarily require a lottery win. Given that it's difficult to go far wrong with that kind of formula, much is expected from this, the Mercedes C-Class Cabriolet. It seems strange to think that this is the first ever open-top C-Class badge model. Mercedes' old CLK Cabriolet, uh, produced in two generations from 1999 onwards, was based on a C-Class but had more upmarket aspirations. Now, these were only ultimately realised when the CLK Cabriolet was ditched in 2009 and effectively replaced by the slightly larger E-Class Cabriolet that launched in 2010. But that continued to leave Mercedes without a convertible precisely targeted at the two premium branded models dominating the executive drop-top sector. Today, we know those as BMW's 4 Series convertible and the Audi A5 Cabriolet. This pair represent extremely tough competition. The Audi has been revitalised in stiffer, lighter second generation form, while the BMW has also been thoroughly updated beneath the bonnet and offers the unique in-segment provision of a metal folding roof. Both, though, can feel like convertible versions of humbler middle management saloons, which is where this C-Class Cabriolet hopes to score. It sets out to look and feel that bit more exclusive, and much of its technology is borrowed from a Mercedes S-Class Cabriolet that would sell for more than twice the price. As you might guess from the size and styling of this model, the fundamentals here are based on those of the brand's second generation C-Class Coupe. So buyers get the latest technology features that have rejuvenated that contender. Things like 9G Tronic automatic transmission, air suspension and the dynamic select driving mode system. Plus, there's the air cap system that reduces open-top buffeting and makes the brand's larger luxury convertible models so serene to ride in when you're travelling al fresco. It all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? So let's put this car to the test. Does anyone actually care how an executive cabriolet like this one drives, as long as it's quiet, luxurious and reasonably fast? But we are, after all, in an age where typical buyers of this kind tend to worry more about phone connectivity and in-car infotainment than they do about handling dynamics. Indeed, on that basis, you might sometimes wonder at the continuing popularity of convertibles in this segment. Drive one roof down and sun glare will probably wash out the colourful centre dash screen, while buffeting is likely to reduce hands-free communication to shouting, I'll call you back! Despite all that, this kind of car remains a tempting way to treat yourself if the way you live allows questions of practicality to take a slightly cramped back seat in your list of priorities. Assume that mindset and if your wish is for a prestigiously badged, accessibly priced cabrio, we'd also assume that this Mercedes would need to be on your short list of possible contenders. There are, after all, plenty of reasons why it should be, given uh, fundamentals that are shared with the likeable and sweet handling C-Class Coupe. Inevitably, this Cabriolet variant has to carry around a bit more weight than its fixed top counterpart, 125 kilos to be exact, most of that resulting from the extra chassis strengthening that's been necessary to stop the chassis from flexing. Now, there's also the extra weight of the hood mechanism. Uh, yeah, of course, the hood, you want to know about that. Well, given that Mercedes has extensive experience in metal folding roof mechanisms with its SLC Roadster, you might have expected the brand to copy BMW's rival 4 Series convertible model and offer that kind of arrangement here. Instead, the Stuttgart designers have gone with a kind of multi-layered fabric hood you'll find in a rival Audi A5 Cabriolet, this one activating in less than 20 seconds at speeds of up to around 30 miles an hour. 
Once the hood is unclipped and on its way backwards, uh, what Mercedes calls an air cap draft stop system springs up on the windscreen header rail. At the same time, a wind deflector uh, glides up behind the rear seats and together these two elements are very effective in limiting cabin buffeting at speed. Adding in the comfort of the air scarf neck level heating system and this becomes then a very civilised means of al fresco travel. For most, it'll all justify adequately the increase in weight we just mentioned. Extra bulk that you really feel when you're pushing on a little around twisting secondary roads. The kind of environment where the coupe model feels eager and agile. Uh, this cabriolet is less responsive, but it's still stable and very well balanced, aided by a standard dynamic select driving mode system that not only tweaks the throttle and the steering, but it also alters responses from the standard agility control adaptive suspension. Uh, uniquely in this class, there's also the option of upgrading that damping into a high-tech air-suspended airmatic setup. And on top of that, mainstream variants get a 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic gearbox that's more sophisticated than anything the opposition can offer. So, that all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? By and large, that promise is fulfilled out on the road. Yes, even in this 170 bhp C220D diesel variant, the derivative that will account for around 80% of sales. This popularity is partly down to accessible pricing, partly down to running cost frugality, and partly because of the fact that the C220D is the only mainstream variant in the range to provide the option of the formatic four-wheel drive system we're trying here. Now, to be offered that, you have to have specified the 9G Tronic automatic gearbox, but most buyers tend to do that anyway. Uh, the smooth shifting nature of this transmission uh, eminently suiting the character of this car. As well as easing through the gears with barely perceptible pauses between ratios, it keeps the power plant ticking over at less than 1500 RPM when cruising at the highway limit. This is just as well because if you do click down a few cogs and push this engine hard, then it can sound a little coarse and unrefined. Uh, fortunately, there's rarely any need to do that, despite the fact that this 2.1 litre turbo diesel is slightly down on power compared to units found in obvious rivals that offer up to 190 bhp. The sprint to 62 miles an hour takes a fraction over 8 seconds on the way to 144 miles an hour, while 400 Nm of torque does its best to compensate for the extra bulk of the bodywork. Uh, for those in search of a diesel variant left unconvinced by that performance, Mercedes provides the same 2.1 litre engine and an upgraded 204 bhp state of tune in the pricier 250D model, offered only in rear-driven automatic form. With this variant, the performance figures are improved to 7.2 seconds and 151 miles an hour, while pulling power is pushed up to 500 newton metres, so your overtaking will be even more effortless. So that's the diesels. What about the petrol options? Well, again, the mainstream engine used is shared between the two volume variants. In this case, a 2-litre turbo unit offered either with uh, 184 bhp and the base C200 or 245 bhp and the much pokier C300. Ideally, we'd want to try and avoid the C200 variant. Its 300 newton meters of torque can sometimes feel like it's struggling with this model's near 1.7 tonne curb weight. You wouldn't really realize that from looking at the conventional performance stats. Uh, rest to 62 miles an hour in 8.2 seconds for the manual version and 7.8 seconds for the automatic, with both variants topping out at around 145 miles an hour. The C300 comes only as an auto and improves the key figures to 370 newton meters of torque, uh, 6.4 seconds, and 155 miles an hour. We should talk about the high performance orientated Mercedes AMG models too, because there are several, starting with a rarely seen variant we really like, the C43 Formatic. Now, in many ways, this C Class Cabriolet offers the ideal blend of style and performance. With a 367 bhp twin turbo V6 engine paired to that great 9G Tronic gearbox uh, and formatic all wheel drive, it's very fast indeed in all weathers, breezing past 62 miles an hour in 4.8 seconds on the way to a top speed that has to be artificially restricted at 155 miles an hour. 
It is really good to drive and the only thing stopping us from hailing it as the ultimate C-Class Cabriolet is its big brother, that V8 C63 flagship model we mentioned at the beginning. This snarling beast only gets rear-wheel drive and an older 7-speed AMG Speedshift Auto gearbox, but it comes with quite an engine, a bi-turbo 4-litre V8 motor delivering at least 476 bhp and that's enough to see the C63 uh, from a standing start to 62 miles an hour in 4.2 seconds flat and on very quickly to a restricted 155 miles an hour maximum. Now if somehow that is still not sufficient for you, there's a further C63S variant with 510 bhp that dips the acceleration time down to 4.1 seconds. No wonder the C63 comes with a driver training package included in the price. Here though, as I said at the beginning, our focus is on mainstream C-Class Cabriolet ownership and the driving dynamics you can expect from more popular variants like this C220D diesel. The stiff body and the relatively long wheelbase deliver quite a planted feel on the road and that's helped by a clever front suspension design that uses a four-link axle and drops the ride height by 15 mils over an equivalent C-Class saloon. This so-called agility control adaptive setup is offered in a firmer form if you opt for the sportier AMG line trim, but we think some buyers might find this a little too firm, which is one of the reasons we suggest you might want to consider the optional Airmatic dynamic handling package. Now this setup replaces the usual steel suspension springs with cushions of air and gives you more choices in the way you can set this Mercedes up. For example, with Airmatic, the car can be raised by 25mm to more easily drive over traffic calming bumps. At higher speeds, meanwhile, the car will automatically be dropped down by 15mm to improve aerodynamics and stability. As standard, the C43 and C63 AMG models have their own version of Airmatic uh, called AMG Ride Control, and that is just as impressive. Whatever suspension system you end up with on your C-Class Cabriolet, you'll be able to fine-tune its responses via the standard Dynamic Select driving mode system that also tweaks throttle sharpness and the feel of the sports direct steer steering. Plus, on automatics, it can alter gear shift change points too. From startup, there's a default comfort system setting, and from there you can choose either a frugally focused eco mode or more dynamic sport or sport plus options. You can also fiddle with the parameters of the various system elements by altering settings on a further individual menu. It's been long enough with this and you'll, well, you should find a setup that you like. Will the whole setup be quite as responsive as that you get in a comparable BMW 4 Series convertible? Well, possibly not, but this model is certainly a dynamic match for the uh, other key segment competitor that Mercedes has to deal with, Audi's second generation A5 Cabriolet, and a car that both these rivals have to take very seriously. A lot's been written about the way that this C-Class Cabriolet uh, offers nearly all the qualities of an exotic S-Class Cabriolet distilled into a more accessible form, which is pretty much how it turns out in the metal. There's certainly an elegance in the sweeping shape that's appropriate to a brand with such a distinguished Cabriolet back catalogue. From the front, the Mercedes branding is proud and prominent, with this large three-pointed star badge positioned in the middle of a distinctive front grille that on mainstream models is patterned with pins that are either black or chrome-plated, depending on the trim level you've selected. Uh, the headlamps feature full LED technology for both the main beam and the daytime running lights, and that's something embellished by this particular model's optional intelligent light system that automatically adjusts the illumination as you drive to give the best possible forward vision at night. Further down, this lower grille is flanked by these larger scoops each side, and on this AMG line model, it's finished by a chrome highlight that runs right across the bottom edge. High-grade details include chrome trim on the A-pin or on the windscreen, uh, as well as a belt line moulding, which extends as far as the soft top compartment, which it borders with a broad chrome trim. Ah, yes, a soft top.
Now, you activate it by the middle button. This trio switches in the central armrest. As for the other two, well, one retracts all four windows, uh, while the other engages the air-capped draft stop mechanism, which raises this rather ugly contraption on the windscreen header rail at the same time as activating this equally awkward-looking wind deflector behind the rear seat. Both features are undeniably effective, though. As for the roof, well, it uh, works in just under 20 seconds, and it can be operated at speeds of up to around 30 miles an hour. The fabric is personalisable too, the multi-layer acoustic soft top available in a selection of colours with a choice of uh, interior headlining finishes. Now we always think that the most uh, critical aesthetic test of any convertible comes when you inspect it roof up. Now in this form, uh, this one remains a desirable looking thing, the tightly fitting hood preserving a profile retaining much of the smart sophistication of the C-Class Coupe model this Cabriolet version is based on. A high belt line, frameless doors and freestanding exterior mirrors all attempt to emphasise a sportier demeanour, plus uh, there are side skirts and larger titanium grey five-spoke alloy wheels on this AMG line variant. Uh, whatever variant you choose, you'll find that the Cabriolet sits 15 millimetres closer to the ground than would an equivalent C-Class saloon. It's at the back, though, that the resemblance to that vastly more expensive S-Class Cabriolet is arguably most evident, with its chamfered surfaces and curving two-piece LED light clusters. Uh, moving the number plate to the lower part of the bumper allows a particularly clean finish, with this whole area restyled for the AMG line trim level to feature a sportier apron with twin aluminium exhausts and a diffuser-style bottom edge. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. In this case, the vast amount of strengthening that was necessary to produce this Cabriolet model's impressively stiff structure. Now, aware that all of this would add in plenty of unwanted weight, Mercedes has fashioned the wings, uh, the bonnet and the boot lid from light alloy. But even so, that's not been enough to prevent this open-topped model weighing in at around 125 kilos heavier than its coupe counterpart. Another questionable compromise has been reached in terms of boot space. With the roof upright like this, the luggage capacity is a relatively acceptable 355 litres. When the roof's stowed, though, uh, that figure falls to just 260 litres. To be fair, that is still 40 litres more than you get in a BMW 4 Series convertible, but you'd expect this soft-top Mercedes advantage in this area to be much greater than that, given its Bavarian rival's use of metal folding panels. What it all boils down to is that here, as with a 4 Series, you've got a cargo area that's so shallow that it'd have trouble accepting even a medium-sized suitcase. Now, given all of this, uh, you won't be surprised to find that when you lift the boot floor, there's no space saver spare wheel provided, and you can't even specify one as an option. However, Mercedes does provide this useful fold-out crate, which is uh, meant to help you stow shopping to stop it uh, flowing around the boot. If you need more room, the rear seats have a 50-50 split folding mechanism. You can activate by these two buttons on either side of the cargo bay to help increase the space on offer. But as you can see, poking stuff through into the cabin from here is severely hampered by the size of the roof storage cartridge. It is all a bit inconvenient, but don't worry. You'll quickly forget all of that once you settle in behind the wheel and begin to live the Mercedes life. Take your seat inside and this electrically extending belt buckler graciously delivers your restraint buckle. Uh, then there's the integral sports seats themselves, bespoke design for this model and fitted out with air scarf neck level vents that you'll be glad of if you're tempted to go al fresco on a chilly day like this one. As standard, these chairs are heated and they feature electric lumbar support and adjustable seat cushion depth as part of creating a more uh, grand touring orientated feel. That's the kind of thing that cabrio buyers will be looking for.
Uh, now, every C-Class Cabriolet gets some kind of heat-reflecting leather for the upholstery. Uh, it's either man-made Artico hide or, as here, real leather if you want it. All of this surrounded by lovely brushed aluminium inlays that you can surround with trimming of your choice. Specified correctly, it can all feel very high-end indeed, especially if you're in an AMG line model like this one, which features touches of black ash wood and gets AMG stainless steel pedals along with this flat-bottomed AMG sports steering wheel. Otherwise, things will be pretty familiar to anyone fluent in modern Mercedes design language. Look around you and the two staples of the brand's currently favoured approach to cabin style are present and correct. So there are five round silver trimmed air vents and above the three in the centre sits a prominent iPad style infotainment screen. Uh, it's freestanding positioning smacking either of afterthought or inspired design depending on your point of view. The standard Audio 20 monitor provided is 7 inches in size, but here that's been upgraded to a more sophisticated 8.4-inch display as part of an optional command online package featuring sophisticated graphics that make those of every other rival system look dull and cheap. Particularly nice are the vehicle sections that allow you to tailor your preferred driving modes via the standard Dynamic Select system. There's all the usual infotainment stuff too, of course, with 3D mapping, uh, live traffic information, use of Mercedes-Benz apps, and in-car internet access for things like Facebook and web radio. In addition, the package provides Linguatronic voice control, a 10 gigabyte music register, plus access to news and weather reports. The command system's functionality is primarily controlled by what at first glance looks as if it might be the auto gear stick. It isn't. Uh, transmission functions are dealt with, as usual on a mainstream Mercedes, by this rather overloaded steering column stalk. Instead, this rather futuristic-looking protuberance manages all your infotainment needs with a rotary dial that uh, swivels, slides and pushes uh, below a higher surface touchpad that permits letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Although in this right-hand drive model, there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand. Anything the infotainment display can't tell you will be covered off by the smaller 5.5-inch colour screen that nestles between the two deeply cowled dials in the instrument binnacle and delivers the usual trip, navigation, uh, radio, media, uh, telephone, assistance and service options that any ordinary C-Class would offer. Uh, what else? Well, we really like the way that the climate control system adapts itself when the roof's down, blowing warmer air onto your hands and deactivating the air recirculation function. As for cabin storage, well, there's pretty much everything you could want. Uh, this beautifully damped cover in front of the gear stick, concealing twin cup holders, a stowage area and a 12-volt socket. Uh, further back, there's this large twin-lidded box between the seats uh, with an SD card slot and two USB points. Uh, there's a large glove box and decently sized door pockets too, with separate moulded recesses for cups and bottles. So, enough on the front. What about the rear? Now, compare this Cabriolet model to its C-Class Coupe stablemate, and you'll find that the dimensions of the two cars are identical, except for this open-top variant's extra 4 millimetres of roof height. Now, I mention that uh, fact because you'll be glad of that little stat if you ever have to get into the back with a roof up, or even worse, you have to reach into the rear uh, to strap in a youngster. Tilting the front seat to provide entry to the back is easy. Uh, the chair just glides forward, doing its best to get out of your way. It does seem a little mean, though, that you have to pay extra to get the memory package that, once you're in, will return that chair to its original position. And once you are in the back, well, you could call this an adult four-seater, but only just. We'd expected that the slight extra wheelbase length advantage that this C-Class Cabriolet enjoys over its BMW 4 Series convertible rival will make it a touch more spacious here for knees and legs. If anything, though, conditions are slightly more cramped than they are on the BMW, and the rear backrest is set at a more uncomfortably vertical angle than it would be on a C-Class Coupe because the roof cartridge box has to sit in behind it. In addition, despite the roof height increase I just mentioned, anyone approaching six foot in height will find their head brushing the exquisitely trimmed roof liner. Still, it's unlikely that any of that will prove to be a clinching issue for most buyers who tend to more usually use these pews for the carriage of jackets and designer shopping bags. 
You certainly can't argue with the classy standards of fit and finish. Plus, there are individual air vents to keep you cool and this double cup holder in the middle of the seats. Think in terms of there being a premium of around £4,500 to own a C-Class Cabriolet over a directly comparable C-Class Coupe model. Now the Cabriolet range starts at just under £37,000 for the 194bhp C200 petrol variant, but most buyers opt to find the premium of around £2,500 to get the 170bhp C220D diesel derivative we're trying here. Either way, there's a £1,500 option of automatic transmission if you want it. Uh, this, the brand's super smooth 9-speed 9 9G9 Tronic Plus gearbox. Choose that, and on this C220D derivative, there's a chance to spend a further £1,500 on four matters four-wheel drive if you want it. C-Class Cabriolet buyers get two mainstream trim choices, a base sport spec or for another £1,500 this more dynamic looking AMG line trim level. What more power? Well, if you're prepared to spend in the forty to forty-five thousand pound bracket, that's readily available. For petrol people, a four and a half thousand pound premium over the C200 will get them into the two hundred and forty-five bhp C300. While for diesel folk, a two and a half thousand pound premium over a C220D will see them behind the wheel of the two hundred and four bhp C250D model. Both variants are offered only with auto transmission and rear-wheel drive. So, those are the regular C-Class Cabriolet derivatives. Uh, we should also mention the probably sporting, turbo, petrol-powered Mercedes-AMG variants, and there are several. Uh, the version that gets all the headlines is the 4-litre 8-cylinder C63, which costs from just over £66,000 and puts out a thumping 476 bhp, or 510 bhp in uprated C63S guys. Now, if you're fortunate enough to be considering this top performance model, don't automatically opt for it before first considering the alternative 3-litre 6-cylinder C43 4-matic variant. With 367 bhp on tap, it's not a lot slower. Plus, with this derivative, there's the added benefit of 4-matic four 4-wheel four drive and a much lower asking price of around £51,000. On to the value proposition, and that's something that Mercedes simply has to get right here. And to seriously threaten its key rivals, the brand needs to offer the kind of price parity that hasn't been achieved in the past with previous models in this segment from the Stuttgart brand. And that is what's been delivered. Uh, this Volume C220D Cabriolet variant priced only just above its two most direct rivals, which are open-top versions of the Audi A5 2.0-litre TDI and BMW's 420D. Of course, diesel isn't the only choice here. Uh, like Mercedes, Audi and BMW offer petrol engines that range from mild to wild. Most will look to the BMW 420i and the Audi A5 2.0-litre TFSi as are likely alternatives to a C200, both these rivals costing only a fraction less. Uh, you could also seek out the M4 or S5 open-topped high-performance version of both these cars as comparably priced rivals to the AMG-tuned variants of this Mercedes Cabrio. Aside from the A5 and the 4 Series, there aren't really many other direct alternatives what's on offer here. Audi's TT Roadster is too small and Vauxhall's similarly sized Cascader doesn't have the badge credibility. While a petrol-powered performance convertible like Ford's Mustang, although it is similarly priced, it's probably a little too hardcore for the typical C-Class Cabriolet buyer. Uh, something like the Range Rover Evoque convertible is probably closer to the mark, but in its volume diesel form, that Evoque is around £7,000 more expensive to buy than a comparable C220D cabrio like this one. Plus, the Evoque can't match the C-Class for driving dynamics or for efficient running costs. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a C-Class cabriolet that you really want, well, then you're going to need to know about the standard spec. So, has Mercedes compromised here in order to achieve that price parity with its rivals? Well, not really. Even the base sport variants receive a long list of standard kit. As well as the electric folding roof, you get the air scarf neck level heating system and the air cap wind deflector and draft stop setup, plus keyless entry and start and electric adjustment with memory settings for the front seats, uh, the steering column and the mirrors. Other features are as they would be for an equivalent C-Class Coupe model. 
and that means that on the outside you get five twin spoke 17 inch alloy wheels, LED high performance headlamps and LED rear lights. There's also active parking assist to automatically steer you into tight spaces and that package is supplied with Parktronic uh, parking sensors and also a rear view camera. Plus there's agility control suspension that lowers the car by 15 millimeters compared to the saloon models. It's an adaptive suspension setup too which means that along with the steering and the throttle responses it can be tweaked via the various settings of the standard dynamic select driving mode system. Moving inside, sport variants get heated front seats with man-made Artico leather style upholstery, electro-pneumatic four-way lumbar support and manual height adjustment for the seat cushions. Now, a classic Mercedes convertible touch is provided by the belt butlers that present your seat belt to you when you get in to save all the usual stretching backwards before buckling up. Uh, there's also a leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel and from here you can control many of the functions of a standard audio 20 infotainment system with its 7 inch central colour screen and media interface. Uh, this setup also includes a DAB digital radio tuner and the standard Garmin Map Pilot satellite navigation. Plus, there are two USB ports and an SD card slot tucked into the lidded cubby between the front seats. If you want to pay the extra to upgrade yourself to the AMG line trim level we're trying here, then you gain larger five-spoke titanium grey 18-inch alloy wheels and an AMG body kit with front and rear aprons and side skirts, plus twin exhaust pipes integrated into the lower bumper. Uh, with this version, the front grille has chromed pins instead of the black ones or the Sport. This creates a more distinctive look that's continued inside with a flat-bottomed AMG Sport steering wheel and brushed stainless steel AMG pedals. And to fulfil that promise on the road, you get firmer sports suspension and sharper sports direct steer, speed sensitive steering. And before we move on to optional features, we'll complete this segment uh, by uh, touching on the extra features that the performance orientated Mercedes AMG C43 and C63 models provide as standard. With these variants, of course, the body kit's more overt with extra badging and more distinctive air intakes, which are complemented by more distinctive 18-inch uh, AMG wheels and four integrated outlets for the AMG performance exhaust system. Inside, the C43 gets red seat belts plus RT leather with red stitching for the dashboard and the seats that also feature dynamic and microfiber. Go for the C63 and the seats get full Nappa leather trim with a memory package plus there's the full command online infotainment system. Our C63 buyers also get an AMG Driving Academy training experience so they can exercise their car's full potential in a safe environment. In most cases, though, the C-Class Cabriolet model you choose will be more like this one, a well-specified diesel variant that you'll want to embellish with a few well-chosen optional features. Now, for this process, the easiest starting point is to choose one of the extra-cost packs. Most buyers go for the Premium Plus package we've got here. That gives you powered adjustment for seats and the steering column, uh, seat memory adjustment, and an ambient lighting package that beautifully lights your C-Class Cabriolet after dark. Uh, the pack also includes a 13-speaker, 590-watt Burmester surround sound stereo with a 9-channel amplifier. And it works through a much more sophisticated infotainment setup, uh, that command online system I just mentioned. Now, with command, uh, you get a larger 8.4-inch central screen and a better 3D navigation system with live traffic information and a speed limit assist feature that flashes up road signs on the monitor as you pass them. Uh, there's also Lingvatronic voice control, plus command works as a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot for your internet-enabled devices, and it gives unrestricted access to Mercedes-Benz apps. The other key extra feature we think you should consider is the Airmatic Dynamic Handling Package, basically an air sprung suspension system that's a unique option in this segment. Now, as with the standard passive agility control suspension, this setup works through the Dynamic Select driving modes, but it is much cleverer, using cushions of air in place of the standard steel springs to fine-tune the handling. It also allows this Mercedes to be uh, raised by up to 25 millimetres to deal with speed bumps, uh, plus it lowers the car by 15 mils at higher speeds for better aerodynamics and stability. 
And beyond that, well, it really depends on how far you want to go. This car has the LED intelligent light system that automatically adapts its beam to suit the road conditions and to see further around corners. Uh, you might also consider the head-up display that projects key driving information into the driver's line of sight. Other extra cost features include a 360 degree surround camera system and an air balance pack that comes with a fragrance dispenser with changeable cartridges in the glove box. Uh, maybe you'd rather spend the money on Napa leather seats in place of the Artico upholstery. Or perhaps you'd like the optional Artico trim dashboard with contrast stitching. Uh, while we're on aesthetics, you might want to look at things like metallic paint. Uh, there are various distinctive Designo colours and the wide variety of larger wheel options. Uh, you'll probably want to personalise the hood colour too. Now, if you don't like the standard uh, black finished item, then you can opt for uh, either dark brown, dark red or dark blue. And there are three choices of roof liner colour too, black, porcelain and crystal grey. That's enough with that, let's look at safety now. This Cabriolet model has its own purpose-designed rollover protection system, consisting of two cartridges that are fully retracted behind the rear seats and therefore invisible. Now, if a rollover is imminent, these cartridges are pyrotechnically fired, whereupon they shoot out to provide a survival space together with the A-pillar. Otherwise, the safety provision is uh, identical to that of a C-Class Coupe, which means it's very good indeed. So we'll start with all the expected stuff, things like twin front side and curtain airbags plus a driver's knee bag, uh, as well as anti-whiplash head restraints, Isofix child seat fastenings, uh, deformable steering column and tyre pressure monitoring. There's also a clever active bonnet that in the nightmare scenario of you colliding with a pedestrian will, in a fraction of a second, raise itself by 80 millimetres and that better protects the unfortunate person's head and gives them a better chance of survival. To help you keep control in the first place, there's the usual ESP stability control system and ABS braking, of course, with brake assist for emergency stops. And that'll activate uh, adaptive brake lights that are able to automatically flash and instantly warn following motorists. Talking of brakes, we should also mention the adaptive brake assist system, which has a hill hold function. Uh, it'll prime the brakes if you suddenly come off the throttle and it'll wipe the discs in wet weather to keep them continually effective. Cleverest of all, though, is probably the Collision Prevention Assist Plus setup. Now, this is like uh, an extra pair of eyes that, at urban speeds up to 31 miles an hour, uses a radar sensor to constantly scan the road in front and behind you for moving and stationary vehicles that might present uh, potential collision hazards. Now, if one's detected, it'll warn you and then prime the brakes. Now, if you don't respond, or you aren't able to, the car can brake itself to reduce the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, the system also protects against rear-end collisions at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. So in other words, it is very clever. Now testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose to tail accidents and decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. And there's more. All variants get crosswind assist that helps to stabilise the car in sudden side gusts of wind and steer control steering assist that helps you to keep the wheel straight at cruising speeds. Uh, then there's attention assist and that's a clever feature that monitors your driving reactions to detect drowsiness and it'll respond to that by prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee. Uh, the standard Mercedes Me Connect system also includes an e-call emergency call system that can deal with accident recovery, uh, breakdown and maintenance management. Plus, if you're incapacitated in the event of a crash, it'll automatically summon the emergency services and inform them of your exact GPS location. Now, that Mercedes Me Connect system can also be upgraded to provide the owner with onboard use of the so-called remote and location services that come as standard if you've got the upgraded command online infotainment system. This means that via your phone or PC, you can track your car if it's stolen, uh, locate it if you've forgotten where you've parked it, update yourself with your C-Class model's fuel level or mechanical status, and even lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. On to extra cost optional safety features. 
A lane tracking package gives you active blind spot assist to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake and lane keeping assist to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on major roads and it vibrates the steering wheel to warn you if you do veer out of lane. Or you could go further and get yourself what Mercedes calls its driving assistance package. Now this includes the lane tracking package plus four other key features and we'll cover those for you now. <clears throat> The well, first and possibly the most important driving assistance pack item is what Mercedes calls pre-safe brake with pedestrian protection. Now this builds on and complements the functionality of that standard collision prevention assist plus system that we mentioned earlier. Uh, rather than just relying on a radar sensor though, the pre-safe brake setup uses a stereo camera that can send out much wider reaching long, medium and short wave radar beams as you drive. These are able to work at much higher speeds and pick up pedestrians as well as vehicles. Now, as with Collision Prevention Assist Plus, autonomous braking can be applied if the system detects a hazard and the driver doesn't respond to the warnings. Now, if, despite all this technological cleverness, an impact becomes inevitable, a further driving assistance pack feature, PreSafe Plus, will automatically activate the hazard flashes while pre-tensioning the seat belts, closing the windows and positioning the electric seats to provide for optimum crash survival. The third unique element in the pack, BAS Plus with Cross Traffic Assist, focuses on dangers that might be posed to you by crossing traffic at junctions. Again, it can alert you and, if necessary, apply the brakes to avoid a hazard. Finally, there's Distronic Plus, and that's a sophisticated cruise control system that can work at high speeds using a radar and automatic braking to keep you a safe distance in front of and behind other cars in highway traffic. As you've said elsewhere in this review, like all convertible body styles, this one carries an inevitable weight penalty thanks to the need for all the necessary body strengthening that's created such high standards of torsional rigidity. So what impact will that have on running costs? Well, a specific answer to that question is that if you make a model-for-model -model comparison between this C-Class Cabriolet and its Coupe counterpart, you'll find that this open-top variant's extra 125 kilos of bulk costs at about 6 mpg on the combined cycle and 10 to 15 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now that downside could certainly have been worse, and it would have been had not Mercedes gone to such great lengths to improve the efficiency of this car in other areas. Now elsewhere in this film, we've talked about the way that light alloy has been used to fashion the wings, the bonnet and the boot lid. Uh, then there's the frugally focused uh, functionality of the 9G Tronic automatic gearbox. Plus the start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights and the dynamic select vehicle driving mode system with its eco setting that softens the throttle response and changes up through the gears earlier to use less fuel. You expect all this to help quite a bit when it comes to overall running cost figures, and it does. So as an example, let's look at the variant that the majority of C-Class Cabriolet buyers will order, a two-wheel drive C220D diesel model fitted with automatic transmission and 17-inch wheels. Here you're looking at uh, 61.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 121 grams per kilometre of CO2. Expect to do fractionally better than that if you order the same car with a manual gearbox and quite a lot worse if you opt for the 4MATIC four-wheel drive system we're trying here. This all-wheel drive automatic variant is rated at 56.5 mpg and 140 grams per kilometre. If you're happy with the two-wheel drive automatic gearbox combination, but you want the extra punch of the Pokia 204BHP C250 diesel, there's not much of a penalty for choosing it. Uh, the readings for this variant rated at 61.4 mpg and 121 grams per kilometre. Obviously, all these figures will fall a little if you choose the larger 18 or 19 inch wheels. Whatever combination of features you choose, though, ultimately, with careful driving, it's quite realistic to think in terms of a diesel version of this car being able to cover around 900 miles on each brim of its 66 litre fuel tank. Time to look at petrol power. 
As expected, the entry level C200 variant fares best with 47.1 mpg and 136 grams per kilometer carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, that's in two wheel drive with manual transmission and 17 inch rims. It's only a fraction worse if you choose auto transmission. If you want more power, you'll find that the C300 model that uses the same two litre engine in a higher state of tune manages 42.2 mpg and 151 grams per kilometer emissions. As for the C43 and C63 Mercedes AMG models, well, efficiency figures won't be a top priority for likely customers, but for the record, the C43 turns in 34 miles per gallon and kicks out 190 grams per kilometer. Drive the C63 though, and you'll be lucky to see its combined consumption of 31.7 mpg, while emissions are registered at 208 grams per kilometer. Of course, fuel and CO2 returns aren't the only issues you'll be considering in terms of running costs. As you'd expect from Mercedes, uh, this car's residual value showing is on the money too. A typical C220D AMG line automatic variant can expect to retain around 45% of its new price after three years and 60,000 miles. And that's about average by class standards. So that makes this C-Class a very attractive option for business and private users funding their car with a lease because it means there's less of a fiscal gap between new and used values. That should compensate for this car's slightly higher insurance costs. A CE220D sits in Group 36 or Group 35 if you go for this formatic version. Uh, think carefully before choosing the more powerful C250D as that attracts a significantly higher Group 41 or 42 rating. As for the petrols, uh, the C200 is ranked between Group 35 and 38, depending on spec, uh, while the C300 is rated at Group uh, 41 or 42. The C43 formatic is further up in Group 45, and the C63 tops out of Group 47 in standard form, or Group 50 in C63S guides. What else? Uh, well, I'll tell you that the comprehensive three-year unlimited mileage warranty is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have the car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. And it's also worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package that takes care of routine maintenance, spreading the cost of regular servicing, uh, guaranteeing the price of parts and labour for up to four services, and also covering the cost of all recommended service items like uh, brake fluids, spark plugs, uh, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. Uh, there's also an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. Finally, if booking your car in for scheduled workshop appointments is just too much effort, well, standard services that come as part of the basic Mercedes Me Connect system can remotely get in touch with your nearest franchise dealership to automatically make the booking for you. Mercedes has long offered executive buyers a cabriolet model, but never one as directly targeted at key competitors as this car is. In terms of price, performance and sheer pavement panache, it's a match for leading class contenders like Audi's A5 cabriolet and BMW's 4 Series convertible in all the ways that really matter. If, having considered these alternatives, you opt for a C-Class Cabriolet, it'll probably be because it offers an extra touch of class and exclusivity that those rivals just can't quite match. Now that's important. After all, you buy a car like this because of the way it makes you feel. And we can see how pulling back the curtains each morning and admiring one of these in your driveway would appeal. Should you need further justification of your choice, then there's plenty to provide it in terms of the things that rivals can't offer. The air cap uh, draft stop system, for example, and the unique option of air suspension. Of course, this Cabrio isn't perfect. Uh, the mainstream diesel variants could be more refined. Plus, there's the fact that competitors slightly better both the comfort and the space provided by the rear seat accommodation on offer here. If you really want this car, though, then we can't see either of those two issues changing your mind. As long as you don't need a big, thirsty engine beneath the bonnet or the other key attributes that a lottery winner would enjoy in an S-Class Cabriolet are here provided in a more accessible form. In short, it's just a bit special, just as a desirable cabriolet should be.